Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are so happy to be here with you again on this fine Sunday. Before I say anything else, I would like to wish all of the mothers on behalf of Ecclesia Christian Fellowship a very, very, very happy Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day out there to all of you moms um, whom sometime played the role as a father as well as a mother. We just want you to know on behalf of Ecclesia Christian Fellowship, we appreciate you. We love you and, and, and words cannot express how much we are so thankful for everything you have done. Um, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna get right into the word of God. I do not want to hold you up um, too long. Uh, this is Mother's Day, and I will be reading out of the book of Ruth. This, this is a special Mother's Day's message. I will be reading out of the book of Ruth, and we will be talking about the exceptional woman that she was and, and, and how she represents a motherhood. But before I say anything else, let me, let me open up in prayer. I'm going to open us up in prayer. If you don't mind, just please bow your heads wherever you are at. Pray with me. Let's take this time to honor God and give God his due reverence. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Father who art in heaven, we come before you, our Lord, offering to you confession of any and of all sins, transgressions, iniquities, and trespasses which we have and do commit against you. We ask that you forgive us, that you redeem us, that you purify us, and that you cleanse us through and in the holy name and the purified blood of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. We offer thanks to you, our God, for every single thing you have done for us. You have prepared a life for us before we were even born. You have comforted us when we needed comforting. You have sheltered us when we needed shelter. You have clothed us. You have fed us. You have protected us from things. You have protected us from harm. When we, we, when we were, were not even aware that we were in harm's way. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for dying on the cross for our sins. So that we might be able to be reconciled unto you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the mothers as we celebrate this Mother's Day. All of the women whom, whom have raised children, whom are continuing to raise children, whom are continuing to provide for their families and be the backbone of their families. We thank you and we ask in the holy name of Jesus Christ that you bless us with the presence of your Holy Spirit that as we speak and talk about your daughter in the book of Ruth, that you open up our hearts to receive your word, to hear your word, and to apply your word to our daily lives. May we be able to glean from this message, from your word, as we celebrate on this Mother's Day. We ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit right now, not only to be upon me, but upon all of your pastors, all of your ministers, all of your preachers, all of your teachers, all of the men and women of God whom are sharing your gospel this very moment. Touch them and bless them that many of your sons and daughters are drawn unto you by and with the power and the strength and the comfort of your Holy Spirit. We ask all of this right now through and in the holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Uh, once again, it's, it's, it's Mother's Day. Um, just a, a quick lesson. My mother, my mother has passed, so I would I would like to wish my mother, uh, Mrs. Leona Williams, a happy Happy Mother's Day. Um, it, there, there's a there's a a rule a rule of thumb is if you have a mother who has passed 
as a man or a young man, you you are you are instructed to wear a a white rose or a or a white uh, carnation rose on on your left lapel. So this this represents um, my mother, the, the the white rose at the top. My wife's mother has also passed, Mrs. Carolyn Carolyn Johnson, Carolyn Ledford Johnson, and um, this this second white white carnation rose represents my wife's mother, whom was also like a mother to me, whom has passed. But there has been some uh, women that are, that are still alive that have played a role crucial to me in my upbringing, and, and they are like mothers to me. And the red rose represents those women in my life, in my life, whom are still alive, whom have been like mothers to me. Um, the first would be Mrs. Wilma Cochran. She has been like a mother to me and has raised uh, my brothers and sisters, so to speak. Um, and also Mrs. Letitia Ledford, whom is officially our big mama. She's still alive and she has been like a mother to me. Okay, now to the first lady of, of Ecclesia Christian Fellowship, Mrs. Linda Beckley, we also extend our happy Mother's Day to you as well on behalf of, of the youth ministry. And like I said, to all the mothers um, across God's footstool, Ecclesia Christian Fellowship extends a happy Mother's Day wish to you. So God bless you. We're gonna get right into this word. I'm glad you can be here with us today. I wanna talk about Ruth. I will be reading out of chapter one, starting at verses eight. Ruth chapter one, starting at verses eight. I wanna give you a little backdrop um, when it comes to Ruth and Naomi in particular, whom was Ruth's mother-in-law. And I want to take my time. I'm going to take my time with this message, but I won't take too much of your time. So the backdrop or the backstory of Ruth and Naomi. Naomi was married to a man named Elimelech, and they fled from, from Bethlehem, or they fled from their native country. And they went to Moab. They went to live in Moab. And the reason they left, because it was a famine in their native country where they were from. So they left because there wasn't no food. So they said, well, let's go someplace where we can get food. So they ran to a place called Moab. And then while they stayed in Moab, uh, Naomi had two sons. Her two sons married two young women. One of the women that her sons married named was Ruth. Okay. Then Naomi's husband died, also Naomi's two sons died, and Naomi was left with her two daughter-in-laws, okay? And before you knew it, after Naomi's husband died, or two sons died, it was a famine in Moab. So the same thing that ran them out of their native country of Bethlehem was also sending them back to their native country. Now. That is something that we experience all the time as Christians. We go to a church, we attend a church, we have a falling out with a possible member or somebody that belongs to that church, and we leave the church. We run away from the church. Then tragedy hits, similar to the tragedy that we're going through right now with the COVID-19 or the coronavirus pandemic. Now, that's running people back to church. So the same thing, the same type of tragedy or the same type of tragic moment that can run you away from church, God can also use a tragic moment to run you back to church. So it was a famine that, that drove Naomi and her husband and her two sons away from her native land. And then it was a famine that caused her to go back to her native land, her native land. Okay, so Naomi has these two daughter-in-laws. Her two sons are, are dead, and her husband is dead, so she just has two daughters, daughter-in-laws at this point. Okay, so I'm in Ruth chapter 1. I will be reading from verses 8 through verses 18, and we will talk about Ruth. Okay. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law. Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. 
May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. So Naomi at this point is encouraging her two daughter-in-laws to go back to their own mothers and live with their own people in Moab. And they both said at first, we will go back with you to your own people. But Naomi said, I'm in verse 11, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. I'm in verse 14. At this, they wept aloud. So now they all crying. All of their husbands has, has, has died. This is a tragic moment for these three women. Naomi once who had two sons, they both died. And not only did she lose her two sons, she lost her husband as well. So she is in a position where she feels manless. And she has two daughters that are from a foreign country, from the city of Moab. And they all crying. Um, I'm sure some of the women can relate. Where, where you've possibly been with some of your girlfriends and y'all just had a, a all out cry fest. Everybody in the room is crying. And they crying. And, I, and I'm, I'm sort of like feeling their pain as I read. Now, then Orpah, I like that, Orpah is O-R-P-A-H, not Oprah, Orpah, kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. So one of the daughters is kind of like throwing in the towel. Orpah is throwing in the towel. She kissed her mother goodbye, but Ruth, that's who we talking about. Ruth clung to her. In verse 15. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her guys. Go back with her. Naomi is still urging Ruth to go. But Ruth, in verse 16. Now, if I could bottle this and put this in a form of marital vows. These would be some strong marital vows to exchange right before you say, I do. Now, this is what Ruth said. And this, 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 this scripture, this passage, this book almost self-ministers itself. Now, this is what Ruth said after Naomi again is encouraging her to leave and to go back and stay with her people. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. Verse 18, when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So Ruth has went all in. 
Ruth has clung to Naomi. And what stands out with what Ruth said is your God will be my God. So she's not so much as clinging to the physical person of Naomi. She's clinging to the God that Naomi knows. She's clinging to the spiritual um, portion, the, spirit, the spirituality of Naomi. Okay? So this is deep. This is deep. So, Ruth. Her name means companion. Her name means friend. It means one of beauty. She represents loyalty. She represents devotion. And she's also very, very significant. It's only two women in the Bible, in the whole Bible, that have a book named after them. And Ruth is one of them. The other woman is Esther. And that is significant. We know right now to this day, women are still fighting for, for equal pay, equal rights across the playing field. So we talking thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago when men were dominant and in control of everything. They didn't even have the right to vote. They wasn't even being counted in population at this time. So you have to understand, for, for the word of God to have an entire book titled after you, you a bad woman. Ruth is a bad woman. She, 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 let me go on. Okay. We, we're doing a series in regards to courageous Christianity. So I'm going to slide just a little courage of Ruth in this passage. But this is a Mother's Day message. Ruth had the courage to say, no. The courage to say no. It's one of the smallest words in our vocabulary. It's only two letters, but sometimes we have all found it the hardest thing to say. No. I'm here to tell you that sometimes you have to have the courage to say no. As a man of God, we get asked to do things sometimes at church, and we think we can run around and do everything, and you can't. You can't. You can't save the world. Jesus Christ already done that. You have to find your lane, stay in your lane, and play your part. Sometimes you just got to say no. Ruth had the courage to say no. She didn't want to go back and worship false gods. She wanted to go and worship the one and only true God. She knew it was something in Naomi that she wasn't getting in Moab. She had a thirst for the Holy Spirit. Do you got that thirst right now? Because before you can go on and be a mother, you first need to meet your husband in order to bear the children that God foresees in your future. That's where we going. Because at this point, I'm talking about Ruth. But Ruth ain't no mother yet. Mm -mm. She's just a widowed daughter-in-law at this time. Women. Mothers. They make decisions based off of the consideration for their children, based off of the consideration for other people. It's nobody that has the heart and the love of a mother. A mother. My mom met my dad, and when she met my dad, she already had uh, seven children. And they was from the old school. And you know, the old school men back then, that was no thing. So I had, before I even came into the game, I had seven siblings, boom, coming in. And then my dad also had some children from his prior marriage as well, okay? What I know for a fact is that before my mother chose to marry and settle down and meet my dad, and I'm glad she did because I wouldn't be standing here right now. She, want, she made sure that he was the right man 
to take care of, to raise and to nurture the, the seven children that she already had. See, that's the love of a mother. She wasn't thinking about how he looked. She wasn't thinking about how much money he made. She wasn't think about, thinking about what kind of car he drove. Women, mothers, make decisions based off how well can you provide for, protect, and shelter my children. Whether it's children that she already has or whether it's children she plans on having with you. That's the, that's the mentality of a mother. I'm talking about mothers. See, men, we not wired like that. We come more from a selfish mentality. Don't get me wrong. We just think me first and not like how women think us and we first. Women are more us and we and men are more me. I'm going to give you some examples. The example I mean is men, we think from a standpoint, let me get a good job so I can provide, so I can provide for my wife and my kids. Let me get a good car so my wife and my kids will have a decent car to drive. Let me get a big house so I can have a big house that me and my wife can stay in. See, the, 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 the first thing is let me. We, 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 we operate off of let me get something. Are, are you with me? And then our selflessness kicks in and we, and we want to provide. So, but it's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that. That's good. That's not, that's not a bad thing. I just want you to see the difference in how we wired. Whereas a woman is more like, how can this provide and protect us? That's the first thought, how a mother thinks. I'll give you another example. You can have a wife and you can offer her a brand new Porsche, convertible, two-seater, $100,000 car. Take her to the car lot and be like, you know, baby, I brought this car for you. She'll look at that car and the first thing she'll say is if she got kids, the kids can't fit in there. She will leave that $100,000 car on the lot. And she would look and think about something that her kids can fit in. That's how a mother thinks. Now, I can take a homeboy or a friend of mine to that same car lot and he can have 10, 10 kids. And I can say, hey, man, I brought you this new drop, side, uh, drop top two-seater Porsche. And you know what he'd do? He'd jump right in that Porsche and pull right on off. He wouldn't say, oh, man, that's a nice car, but I got a big family. No. We would think, let me go on and get this car, and the next stop, I get something else for my family. That's how men are wired. So I'm talking about mothers. They are always catering to, thinking about the care of their children. A mother would marry and get with a man that she, does, that she possibly did not like. He wasn't the man for her. He wasn't her first choice. But if he can provide and take care of and nurture her children, she would choose that man because that is the love of a mother. She would take the more stable man over the man that looks very handsome and good but don't got nothing else going on but the handsome and the good. See, that's the love and the sacrifice of a mother. Now, if you flip that coin, men, mm, not so, as much. Are you with me? Enough example said, that's why you got to love your mom. If your mom is next to you, if she close by, you need to give her a hug and a kiss and let her know how much you appreciate her because she very well made some sacrifices for you. Now, let's get to Ruth. So Ruth returns back with Naomi. She has nothing. They have nothing. They go back because they were dealing with a famine. She's with Naomi people. And everybody's looking at Ruth like, what happened to you? You know, when you left here, you was, you was doing it big. You left with a husband and two sons, and now you come back with just this strange girl that we don't even know. What's going on? She has hit rocky ground, okay? But when you hit rocky ground, the question is, do you know where to run? Naomi knew where to go. 
She knew to go back home. Now, I like to, to, I like to use the example, what I started with earlier, how a tragedy can run us away from church and then a tragedy can run us back to church. I like to think of Naomi as somebody that ran away from the church, but now a tragedy has ran her back to the church, okay? And she has her daughter-in-law, Ruth, with her. Okay, now let's read a little bit more. I'm in Ruth chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 2. Ruth chapter 2, verse 2. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up leftover grain behind anyone whose eyes I find favor." So Ruth and Naomi stand where they stand. Ruth wake up one day or one day she just tells uh, Naomi, you know, let me go out in the field. I'm getting tired of sitting up in here. We need food. We need something to eat. I got to get out there and go get it. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered the field, and began to glean behind the harvesters. She began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz. Now, I did a message on Boaz, and I, I labeled him Big Bad Ball and Boaz. Now, Boaz was the son of Rahab, and Rahab was a Canaanite that helped the spies bring down the city of Jericho. So Boaz's mother was a Canaanite, and his mother Rahab was also a prostitute. So Rahab don't have a son that don't grew up to become a very wealthy big big balling man that, that owns many fields and got many workers, and his name was Boaz. Now, Naomi told her, go, my daughter. So she went, in verse 3, entered a field and began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz. So she don't end up in, in, in Boaz's field. Now, he was also kin to uh, Elimelech, who was from the clan of Elimelech. So he was kin to Naomi's husband. Okay, verse 4. Just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. And when he greeted them, he said, the Lord be with you. You know, that was a way of saying, what's up? And they greeted him back. They said, the Lord bless you. They answered. And Boaz asked the overseer of his harvest, who does that young woman belong to? So he don't see Ruth in this field. So it was something about Ruth that stood out. And he possibly already knew who Ruth was. He just was inquiring, like, you know, I, I know who that is. But he just asking his boys, like, who is that over there in, you know, in my field working? Okay. The, over, the overseer replied, she is a Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. So he immediately, <laughs> I don't know what to say. It was that some way of like sneaking in hate, it's hard to say. But he immediately said, oh, she a Moabite. Like, you know, she a Moabite, she off limits. I don't know what he meant by that. I don't know why he said, it. she is a Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. And she said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. Okay. So he's not really giving her no props. He's like, ah, oh, she a Moabite. She's been here picking up. She came back from Naomi, and, and, you know, and she took a short rest. And, you know, I don't know if you, she a Moabite. Like as if to say, leave her alone. She a Moabite. Not knowing that he talking to Boaz, whom is half Canaanite. His mama was a Canaanite. Okay. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with me. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground, and she asked him, Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, 
a foreigner. In verse 11. And Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. How you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. So Boaz recognizes Ruth in his field, and he has told her not to leave his field, but to stay. To stay in his field. And I'm going to drop down to verses 18. Chapter 2, Ruth chapter 2, verses 18 through 19. She carried it back to town. This is, she got all this grain. She carried it back to town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Her mother-in-law asked her in verse 19, where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. I'm going to go on back down, skip a few verses, go to verse 22. Just trying to give you the meat. Okay? It's all meat, though. I'm just trying to get to my story so I can kind of break it up. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, in verse 22, It will be good for you, my daughter, to go with the woman who worked for him, because in someone else's field you might be harmed. So Ruth stayed close to the women of Boaz to glean until the barley and wheat harvest were finished, and she lived with her mother-in-law. Now, the thing is this. When you find a church home. You need to stay there if it is in fact a good church home. And the reason I'm saying that is because sometimes we find something that's good and we go for a minute and then we find a reason to leave and then we go find another church. And we stay there for a minute, then we find a reason to leave that church and we go to another church. See, you got to have consistency when it comes to the word of God. You got to find a place that is feeding you spiritual food consistently that you like, and that's what you need to stay with. You can't just keep going around eating here, eating there, eating all this, these different types of things, because what's gonna happen is you are going to become numb to the word of God. So what Naomi was telling Ruth, you have found a good thing. You have found a good church home and you need to stay there and you need to walk behind the men and pick up what they are leaving behind. So you need to walk behind the men and women of God at the church that you are at and pick up the nuggets that they are leaving behind. You don't need to go from this church and that church and that church and this church. You need to find a church home and you need to stay there. The same way Naomi walked behind them men, and they left a lot of a, a, hard, a lot of wheat on the ground. That's why uh, Naomi was like, "Girl, where you been today?" Ruth came in with so much stuff. Naomi was thinking, "Like, girl, where you been? Wherever you been, you need to go back." So what I'm telling you, if you are being fed by Ecclesia Christian Fellowship, who likes to create authentic Christians and who likes to pick up the broken pieces in the lives of people. And we have blessed you and our teachers have blessed you and our ministers have blessed you. You need to stay put and you need to pick up the things that we are dropping down. You need to pick up the, I'm picking up nuggets. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stay right here. The pastor is dropping a lot of wheat, man. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I need to stay put and pick that wheat up. You can't keep bouncing around here and there because what's going to happen is you're going to make the word of God not that effective in your life because you have been eating at so many different places. You don't know what you like. You don't fool yourself. So Naomi, not so Ruth stay put. She stayed with the kinsman redeemer. Now, now, now we getting somewhere. Because now we finna start talking about the kinsman redeemer. That's what Boaz was. That's all Boaz was. He was a man that had plenty. And we know who has plenty. It's none other than Jesus Christ. 
Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Now see, that's our kinsman redeemer. Boaz was a type of Jesus Christ. That's all he was. Now, Ruth told, told um, Naomi told Ruth, you need to stick close to Boaz. And what I'm telling you is you need to stick close to Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, what happened? Now, I'm finna paraphrase, and you can read this story when you get time. I got to get to it. I got to get to it because it's in my bones and it's eating me up. So what had happened was later on, they were, they were celebrating um, the barley and the wheat harvest. Okay. Now, when they celebrate this barley and wheat harvest, the men, they just go out there. I guess they chill and they just look at all the barley and the wheat they got. So Naomi told Ruth, you need to go and sit at the feet. I take that back. She didn't say, go sit at the feet. She said, go lay at the feet of Boaz, your big time balling kinsman redeemer. See, when you find a good place, you need to prostrate yourself and lay at the feet of Jesus. That's what uh, Ruth went and did. So she went and laid at the feet of Boaz, her kinsman redeemer. Now our kinsman redeemer is Jesus Christ. So I need to go and lay myself at the feet of Jesus Christ like Ruth did to Boaz. So when she went and laid at the feet of, of Boaz, he looked down there and he seen her. And when he seen her, he threw his covering over her. He threw his blanket over her. What you have to understand is back then what that blanket symbolized is if a man covered you up, that meant you were his spouse. That meant he meant to marry you. That sent the signal, oh, leave her alone. She's off limits. See, the person that has threw a covering over us is Jesus Christ, man. That's our kinsman redeemer. That's our husband. You have to understand that the church is considered to be the bride of Jesus Christ. Now, Christ don't do a blanket over us. Christ don't cover us up and has forgiven us of all our sins. That's who we need to be laying at his feet. We need to be worshiping him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, she still ain't had no children yet. But this is a Mother's Day message, and I'm talking about Ruth. But Ruth ain't had no children yet because she's not going to have children until she meets her kinsman redeemer. Then she will be blessed. And we're not going to bear no fruit until we go and lay at the feet of Jesus Christ. Then we will be blessed. Now, you got to understand the child she had was none other than Obed. Okay, now Obed had a son named Jesse. Then Jesse had a son named David. And we know David was a man after God's own heart. David is the one who the lineage that Jesus Christ comes through. So here you have a woman that was a Moabite that didn't have nothing, but she first sought a good church home. When she found the church home, she stayed there. And after she stayed there, she laid at the feet of Jesus Christ and she worshiped and she praised. And then God blessed her. Then Ruth had her fruit. And she didn't only just have a baby. She didn't just have a son. She had Obed, who had Jesse, who then had David. Oh, my goodness. And now you have to understand, Ruth is the great-grandmama of David, but she's a Moabite. Now, I did a whole other message on that. And let's not forget Boaz, who was part Canaanite. I'm going to leave that alone. We're going to stick with Ruth. Now, have you found a church home? If so, you need to stay there. If you got a good church, you need to stay there and you need to pick up what the men and women of God at that church is dropping down. And you need to glean behind them. And then you need to lay at the feet of Jesus Christ, just like Ruth laid at the feet of Boaz. And after you've done that, you have now found your kinsman redeemer. Your kinsman redeemer is none other than Jesus Christ. And then you can bear spiritual fruit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then she, she gave birth to a son. I'm talking about Ruth, and I just want all of you mothers to know. Happy Mother's Day. You guys are so important to what we do. The decisions you made. See, Ruth made a, a selfless decision. Everything she did, it wasn't for her. She was actually doing things to take care of Naomi. She was actually doing things to take care of Naomi. She probably possibly wasn't thinking about or wanting to get with Boaz like that. 
Naomi told her to go lay at the feet of Boaz. She didn't say, you know what, Naomi, I want to go lay at the feet of Boaz. Naomi told her to go lay at the feet of Boaz because Naomi was looking at what Boaz could provide. Naomi wasn't looking at Boaz, what he looked like, what he drive, what kind of car he got. Because see, Naomi had already been a mother. So she had the motherly instinct and she knew that Boaz could provide not only for her, but he could provide and protect her daughter-in-law whose name was Ruth. That's the heart of a mother. That's the instinct of a mother. That is why we celebrate mothers and we celebrate Mother's Day. Y'all just have a caring, nurturing spirit and, it's, it's, and, 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 and you pull back the layers of a man before you um, commit to that man. It's, the, it's, it's like God. It's how God, before God puts any man, any senior pastor, any minister, any preacher, any teacher of his word in charge of a flock, he, lay, he peels back the layers on that, of that man and makes sure that that man is qualified to protect and to provide for and to shelter his children. That is how a mother thinks. That is exactly how a mother thinks. Before a mother commits to any man, she checks that man out. That's why you gotta go out on dates. She's eyeing you. She's making sure you gonna provide, you gonna shelter, you gonna take care of her children. And if you trip up, if you slip up, she'll start backing up from you. She come up with all kinds of excuses. Nah, not tonight. Nah, I'm tired. I'm doing my hair tonight. I'm my girlfriend coming over. She back up from you because she has seen something in you that does not qualify you to be her spouse to be her husband, to be the provider for her children. So now let's talk about God. He is the exact same way. When he looks at us as men and women of God, he pulls back layers. He checks our hearts. He takes us through trial and error. He takes us through trials and tribulations to see what we are really built of, to see what we are really made of before he puts us in charge of any of his children or he ain't going to let us be. He ain't going to let it go down. So to the mothers again, we cannot thank you enough. I just want you to know we wish you all a very, very happy Mother's Day. And to all of you who have not found your kinsman redeemer, whose name is Jesus Christ. It ain't Boaz. Who you looking for is Jesus Christ. And you can be a man or a woman, but you're looking for Jesus Christ. You can have your kinsman redeemer right now. Now, bow your heads right now, wherever you are, whatever type of device you're watching me on, bow your heads, say this prayer with me. And the same way Naomi and Ruth were saved from a famine is the same way you can be saved from your sin in a life of torment in hell. A life of torment in hell. You have somebody that is willing to redeem you. You have somebody that is willing to forgive you. Forgive me as well for your sins. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Bow your heads. Pray with me. Let's all be redeemed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father. Our God. We accept. And we believe. That your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, died on the cross for our sins and that he was resurrected on the third day. We accept this. We believe this. And we ask that Jesus Christ come into our hearts and come into our lives right now. Bless us to find a good church home, to glean good spiritual food from, and bless us to continue to walk behind the men and women of God at that church so that we can pick up the extra spiritual food that they leave behind and bless us to lay prostrate down at the feet of Jesus Christ and praise and worship Jesus Christ and bless us how you bless Ruth to bear fruit and to have a son named Obed. Bless us to bear spiritual fruit and to lead more of your sons and daughters unto you. We ask all of this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you said that prayer with me, welcome to the family. You have just been introduced. You have just met your kinsman, Redeemer. Again, we want to say on behalf of Ecclesia Christian Fellowship, happy Mother's Day. We love all the mothers, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts 
for every single thing you have done and every single thing that you do and the things that you haven't even done yet that you will do in the future. We thank you. Go to our website, www.ecclesiachurch.com. Get on there and start clicking the mouse around. We got all kinds of classes and things going on. God bless you guys. We love you with the love of Christ.